So Mr. Mailman just brought some huge ass boxes. And in case you can't tell from this big box, Aeroflow has jumped on board with the wagon build and they are sponsoring the channel. So we have yet another awesome sponsor and they have helped us out with not only a huge 90 liter fuel cell, but we should have a bunch of fuel hoses and everything to get the fuel system underway. So I'm gonna rip into these boxes because I can't wait to see this big bad boy. So, taking off the top, you have a look in there. Really good to know that it's baffled on every angle. I was really worried it was just gonna be one big empty box and that uh, then tank slosh would really be an issue. But, good to see that there's baffles in it because that will be super handy. All right, now let's rip into this one because this one should be all of our hoses. All righty, and then in box number two, got our dash 12 line which should be three meters or so and we got a bunch of p clamps Ooh, this stuff is so exciting so fun oh Some more awesome little clamps this should be our black fuel pump and then we got this should be dash eight which is sick another dash eight I don't even remember ordering up this stuff. Um, another dash eight. And this should be dash 10, dash six, dash six. Sick. All right, let's lay all this out and have a look what we got. Now I gotta figure out how the hell, like where all this is really going, figure out a game plan. So I might take this out to the wagon and uh, not really like start dummy fitting the dummy fit. See how, how, the, how the cell will sit, how big of the floor we'll need to make for it. And yeah, so this little pump just here should be absolutely perfect for literally like we just need high volume, low pressure because we can't pressurize the system. That's the same reason why we have dash eight fuel lines with a dash 10 return so that the fuel can just be pushed back into the tank without being forced in because you can't pressurize the fuel system, especially with methanol. So this bad boy should be perfect with getting the high flow, low pressure to get the methanol up to the front tank for the mechanical pump to then source from that tank to give to the engine. All right, let's go play with this stuff in the garage with the car. As normal, Leo loves the cardboard boxes that all my stuff comes in. But uh, one of the things that I really like about this, hang on, I'll turn the flash out on so you can see it, is like I was just saying with the baffle, this camera might be able to see it a bit better, just like, it's, I was really worried this is just gonna be a huge metal box. And it's, it's cool to see that it's baffled in every corner. So that when we're smashing it on power crews, going around the track or something like that, or mad tipping, we're not gonna get mad fuel slosh, which will end up breaking welds as it slaps against the wall or something. So we will still brace the sides of it. And because we don't want it to happen regardless. What do you want? Yeah, we will brace the sides still. Um, but it is really good to know that there is baffles on the inside to keep it from sloshing. I'm quite happy with that. Oh, so I almost forgot today's bloody intro. I've been that excited. So uh, what's up guys? Welcome to today's video. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, we're finally playing with the fuel system. So I've got the tank in the back now so we can get a rough idea of what we're doing. So if we open up the back here, this is where the big boy will sit. So I was actually almost thinking it was going to be bigger than this and it would take up the entire spare wheel well. But that is not the case. So we have the rails of the car. We go along this flat spot just here and along this flat spot just here. So I want to be able to mount the false floor on there, but then so that this cannot flex or move, I'm then going to use some flat bar, actually not flat bar, like some two by four freaking aluminium square. Like I can actually build like just some channels that go across the front and back for the feet to get to. Um, because here is where it mounts and everything. Um, and then we've got the return line, breather, and then I could get under the car and show you, but I'm not going to. We've got, can you see it from there? Yeah, down there, we've got the sump where both of the feed lines come out. Um, and then we got the filler point just there. And yeah, so the good thing is, is this is a good size in the boot. 
so that I will be able to easily have like one bolt here, one bolt here, and build just a little cocoon that'll go over it. Again, so that in case if there's a fire or something or the, or the tank splits or something like that, it's got another shield around it instead of being able to go into the cabin. So just, just another little uh, fire safety thing that I wanna put in, put in place. Awesome, so what I'm gonna plan on doing now is uh, tomorrow, tomorrow the injector hat will be here. And what I'm also gonna try and do tomorrow is go and get some sheet metal and start planning out this back area so I can get this test mounted and test fit. And I can start measuring and running some lines. Um, we didn't order any fittings just yet because we obviously want to figure out how, how long the lengths are, how many we're going to need because fittings are going to end up being expensive and we need to make sure we've got the right ones, right amount. So we're going to try and draw up like a little mud map of what we're going to need where before we attack that challenge. But it is super awesome seeing the fuel cell on the back of the wagon because the fuel cell especially like really, really makes it feel like a burnout car, which is sweet. All right, I'm gonna get some fuel lines because I want to get played with some of them. Good, like if you come under here, yeah, so there's the sump, and it points down directly above the cradle. So I should be able to feed lines straight through there, try and keep them as far away from tires as much as possible, and fire and all the other goodies. Fuel pump, I wonder if we'll be mounting that too, because I would like that somewhere accessible, but then obviously, if the sump's down the bottom there, you gotta get the fuel in and out down the front. And then we'll have our dash 10 line, which will be going from the tank under the car all the way to the front. Oh no, so, so sorry, dash 10 is the return. Dash eight is what's sending the fuel to the front. So that's the main fuel line and the dash 10 is the return line. Um, then we've got another, another dash eight. That'll be just for like plumbing through the engine bay and everything like that. Um, I know that we got dash 12. Forget what we got that for. I know that Chase Boucher, we pretty much copied what he got kind of thing. And I forget what he got that for. It's in the engine bay. I think it was from the check valve. No, that's to the hat. That's the, that's the fuel line from the fuel, mechanical fuel pump to the hat. And then I think I got this little bad boy. See, I'm pretty sure I got this dash six, I think for power steering, which I might need to get more of because I don't know if I'm gonna mount it in the back or if I'm gonna mount it in the front of the car, but I might do it in the front because there's a lot of room in there, so maybe. And then we use these bad boys to be clamping up some of the single line. Yeah, I think these are, yeah, these are for dash 12. And these are dash eight and 10, which will be holding the fuel lines going to the front of the car. Um, let's get them. Dash 12, so these ones will be the dash. Yeah, so just a bunch of different clamps to hold everything as it goes to the front and back of the engine. Or front and back of the car, I mean. Yeah, oh, I'm keen to get this underway now. Actually start making some stuff on the car. I've been bloody talking about it for that bloody long. It's gonna be exciting to actually start making some stuff, mounting some stuff, and then mounting everything in the front of the engine bay and everything. The injector hat's here tomorrow. And I get sent to APM, and then we can put the engine on the dyno bring the engine home, put it in the car. Then hopefully things will start taking off faster and faster as we slowly get to be able to do more things. Yeah, it is definitely a good sight and a good feeling to see that big fuel cell on the back of the wagon. Definitely keen. Alrighty, I might have to wrap up today's video here, but I'm running, I've run out of time today. I've, I'm quite busy with quite a few different things. So I'm really happy that this actually turned up in time. And yeah, so now I actually feel like we can properly start getting this all underway and everything. So it is quite exciting. The uh, fuel cell and all the fuel lines are here. And I'm so glad that we got this big boy and everything's gonna fit perfectly. So we can build a massive shell around it. And yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna work great. So. I think that's where I'll wrap up today's video. So again, a huge shout out to Aeroflow and the guys over at Rocket Industries. Massive thanks for them jumping on board. Uh, things like this wouldn't be possible without them. Like I've preached many times before, I'm just a simple kid trying to build a freaking my dream car. Not limitless on funds, trying to grind through most of it. So things like this are what makes the build possible where companies as nice and great as Aeroflow are happy to jump on board. And I, like I said, I cannot thank them enough and because of them, this build is that much closer to being done. So next video, which will be Friday at 6 p.m., I'm hoping that we start to plan out the floor, actually start to build it, possibly mount the tank, 
and then start measuring up and running some fuel lines. And also we will have the injector hat to look at, which will be super fun. And I've got a little thing that I'm gonna try on it, which, which should look super spicy, which I'm hoping you guys will love. Maybe a bit polarizing, but I know it's gonna set the car off sick and it's gonna look freaking nuts. So trust me with it. Alrighty guys, I'll catch you in the next one, which will be Friday at 6 p.m. Be there or be square. Alrighty guys. Peace. I've been in thugging, you bitching and bugging. There's nothing that we got in common. I've been out grinding and hustling, investing. This paper got tired of eating that ramen. All of my music be heat, I ain't missing a beat. I've been blessed with impeccable timing. Watch all them people who friendly, it turning to envy whenever they see that you shining. Okay, I'm